Oh, oh yes, one more thing. Okay. So, the other thing, too, Father has the books that we've been talking about. I'm going to take a picture of those ones right now. Um, here's also some things like the posts that Father has left for us. If you guys want to come up here and grab some of those, that would be awesome. Yeah, we're going to have some great stuff. Yeah, we're going to have some great stuff. One more information that I needed to give you guys today. Okay. So this will be the the last talk. Um, we will talk about. <clears throat> the army that God has provided for us, the weapons that we have, and the consequences of war. Many of you know more about this than, than me, so after any kind of difficult situation or war, uh, there are wounds that we carry, mental wounds, physical wounds, so we will talk about that and how to heal them, how to always stay healthy and strong. That's why I, I was going to use, and I'm going to use that drawing uh, so when I'm going together, it's going to make sense. Right now, probably you see a tree, you see roots, and probably you don't see a connection yet, but it's interesting how we can learn from that drawing. Let's begin always asking the intercession of St. Michael and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel. Thou Prince of the Heavenly Host, the power of God, has is the hell seated, and all evil spirits. Can you see from if I'm standing here you cannot see the, the PowerPoint? Can you? I don't know if, if I should go there or what do you think, Tim? All right. So, now the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, strengthen me, and console me. Tell me what I must do, inspire me what I must say. Give me your orders. I promise to submit myself to you, all that you ask of me, and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. I may only know your will and do your will. So as I was saying, this, this is going to be the, the last talk. And my next project is going to be number four. I didn't have enough time to, to work on this. Uh, grace and holiness. So when we talk about a life of virtue, self-denial, sacrifice, discipline, we need grace and we need this desire to be holy. And Father Chad Ripperger, and I think some of you sent me that video, I don't remember, is talking about uh, holiness and spiritual warfare. So that's a nice combination. And I, I'm going to work on that talk in the future because everything that we are learning or we have been learning so far, uh, we can apply to number three, for sure, about healing, uh, forgiveness, uh, our weapons that we have. But if we don't have this desire to be holy and to strive for virtue, um, life of prayer, etc., Everything that we talk about is just going to be information. So with number three, we're good enough to, to, to be warriors of Christ. But number four should lead us to a deeper encounter with Christ. Okay? So I'm going to be working on that in, in these months. Um, when I'm done, I'll let you know. And we, if we can make the time, that will be great. So know your army. I forgot <clears throat> to add here, yes, um, St. Joseph. But let's begin with the church, the Holy Spirit, the angels, the saints, and I would add there St. Joseph and the Virgin Mary. I would say that they are our main, um, or the main army that God has provided for us. I'm going to explain why. Probably this is new for you, and I hope it is, because this is very interesting to, to learn. These are called the states of the church. 
and this is from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It's not that we have three different churches, we have three different states of the church. It's one holy church, but different states. So as you can see, we have the church triumphant, those who are in heaven, the Virgin Mary, the martyrs, the apostles, <clears throat> the saints, all the angels, for sure. Then we have the penitent church, or the purgative church, where we have all the holy souls in purgatory, and then us here, the militant church, or the church militant. We are in this pilgrimage to, to heaven, or to salvation, and all who are baptized belong to the church. Because don't forget, those who are not baptized are creatures, not yet children of God. So we um, receive all the rights and duties as children of God when we are baptized. So this is what, what our reality is in, in the church, the states of the church. In the church triumphant and in the penitent church, we have different levels. I'm going to write down here. Just, I don't know if you remember when I was doing this drawing about the angels. The same is in heaven, purgatory, and even in hell. Depending, in the case of uh, heaven, depending on your merits, is the place that you deserve in heaven. Depending on the uh, sins or anything that you need to purify in your soul, you're going to be in a different level. So let's say this is the, the top level. Okay, This is the lowest. Um, let's say that you or, or a person died uh, not repented enough, but at the last second of his life or her life, he was able to repent, and at least his soul was saved. So let's, let's, let's put it this way. This person was saved, but he had to go to the deepest level of the purgatory, and then he will have, have to go all the way up so that finally he will enter into heaven. Okay? So the soul of that person is saved, but this person needs to purify more than others who died, let's say, in the state of grace, with all the sacraments, because it, it's, it, it does, um, there's a huge difference how you die. And I can tell you this as a priest, because you see people who have been consecrated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, who were asking, or the family, for uh, the sacraments, or a person who died without the presence of a priest, and that person was able to repent. So I was saying to, uh, the other day that it's, don't take it wrong, but it's, it's more important how you die uh, um, than how you live. How you live matters, but the last moment of your life matters the most. And that's why the Lord is always telling us that we should be ready for any time uh, if, if he calls us at any moment in our life. Okay? So purgative church, triumphant church, militant church. So that's us. I'm going to show you another drawing that is going to help us understand uh, more. This is the states of the church, church in purgatory, us here. We participate in the Mass, the best sacrifice, an offering that we can give to God in heaven, and the souls, um, the holy souls in heaven. Okay? So we can help those who are in purgatory through our prayers, sacrifices, and especially the holy sacrifice of the Mass. We can help them um, purify more and more their sins so that they can go up to heaven. Holy souls in purgatory, those who are let's say, near uh, the doors uh, to get into heaven, they can also intercede for us and help us. And sometimes you will see souls in purgatory uh, showing up in this life asking for prayers. There are many saints who had th th those experiences of souls in purgatory appearing to them in the night or any time asking for prayers. Okay? There are so many stories about it. Um, the church militant, all of them, they can also help us here, but uh, they cannot help us help them much here because they need uh, prayers, uh, but especially those who come from the church uh, militant. Okay, but at the at the end, we all work together for the glory of God. That is called the communion of of the church or the communion of communion of saints. Um, 
And when I'm done with all the, the summary, you can read from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 955. It talks about, sorry, 954, about the communion of the Church of heaven and earth. Okay, if you want to go deeper into that. I'm not going to read it right now because of time. There is a lot of information about that. So now we move to the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to go deeper into... <clears throat> who he is and what his mission is. <clears throat> I invite you to read this book. It's a little bit uh, thick, but it's a good book about the Holy Spirit. That was the book that really changed my life and the way I approach uh, the Holy Spirit now. So for me, the Holy Spirit is part of my daily prayer, my uh, daily intercessions. I mean, he, he's part of my life and it, it does make a, a difference in your life when we uh, invoke him when we work with him okay so that's a good book and we used that book one time many years ago for our retreat <clears throat> and i learned so many things about the holy spirit so what is his mission and i think we talk about this a few times his mission is to sanctify us so there is another drawing <clears throat> i'm adding more things here but we have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. The Father's mission is to be the Creator. The Son, <clears throat> the Redeemer. And the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier. So from the Holy Spirit is, that, is where we obtain all the graces that we need to be holy. That's why we talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So... He is the one who is going to help us participate in the divine life, and that's only through the sacraments, and help us achieve heaven, eternal life. He's also the one who is going to always lead us, that's his intention, to a life of virtue, perfection, and holiness. That's what he wants to do in you and in me. But it's up to us to accept it, to be open to his graces. So how does he sanctify us? Sacramental life, as we know, and we have the presence of the Holy Spirit in all the sacraments, even confession. When you receive the absolution of your sins, the priest is saying, and I absolve you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and what else? And of the Holy Spirit. The Eucharist is the same. We ask the, the Holy Spirit to come, and he's going, the, he's going to be the one who is going to help transform the transubstantiation, the bread into the body of Christ, and the wine into the blood of Christ. So, is present in all the sacraments. Also, he helps us <clears throat> sanctify us through prayer life, works of mercy. Now, uh, during Lent, is a good time for us to practice the works of mercy. What does he ask of us? Uh, fidelity, obedience, thirst for knowledge, but especially this one, to listen. And I'm going to explain this in a moment. How does he instruct us? Through the Holy Scriptures, the study of our faith and doctrine, motions and inspirations. So when we listen to that inner voice, which is our conscience, and we follow those motions or inspirations, we keep growing in that relationship with the Holy Spirit. and We keep having this desire to be better. In your case, better men, better husband, uh, better uh, fathers, etc. So it's that voice that is, that is always telling you to do the right thing. When we follow that voice, we grow and we allow him to work more on us. That's why the saints were growing in virtue so much, because they were listening to that inner voice, obeying that voice, and growing in virtue. So all the things that they were doing, they knew, they knew that it was God's will. Also, it takes discernment, for sure. Okay? <clears throat> um, where does he operate? In the church, through the sacraments, and within us as his holy temple. This is a, a main summary. Uh, probably you're not able to read that, but, uh, small letters of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, let me see. You can read them in another moment, but I, I just want you to know this. Each gift helps to grow in virtue, perfection, obedience, fidelity, and holiness. So they are there for you to be holy. Don't forget that. They work within our soul, in our, our memory, intellect, and will. And actually, I have uh, more information about this I'll see if I have enough time to explain it. But the Holy Spirit is the main um, person who helps us 
heal our soul okay, through his gifts and fruits. The gifts have to be active and operating, otherwise they will only be there but inactive. That is why we don't see the changes or progress in ourselves. Let me explain this to you. <clears throat> when you were baptized, you received the Holy Spirit. And I, I, I use this example uh, when I catechize about uh, baptism. So imagine that each of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, seven, they are vessels, okay, transparent vessels made of, of um, I don't know, glass, okay, vessels, seven. So when you were baptized, you were able to receive those vessels, and then the Holy Spirit, because you were a baby or depends the, the age, he poured out into your soul the gifts in a different level, depending on your faith. So when you are a baby, I mean, you barely know what you're doing, so probably what you needed to, to be a baby and then grow in virtue. Um, but when you were confirmed, you had the capacity to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the fullest. But again, uh, it's up to the faith and how you receive the confirmation, the sacrament of confirmation. So whenever we don't ask for these gifts, it's like um, when you are driving your car, the gas goes down. The, yeah, the, the gas, how do you call it? Yeah. The gas tank goes down if you don't put more. The same. So whenever you know, <clears throat> for example, uh, you are lacking of, of piety, you are lacking of, of wisdom, uh, you need to ask that. So I'm going to read this really quick. Fortitude, it says, help us to overcome difficulties with faith. Piety moves us to treat God with a trust, with a child, uh, treats uh, his father. Fear of God compels us to flee from sin and always choose to please God. Counsel encourages us to follow the solution that most matches the glory of God and the good of others. Understanding help us understand the word of God and the doctrines of faith. Wisdom makes us see all things in light of God and impels us to seek him above all things. Knowledge helps us to see the world from God's perspective. So again, if you know that you are lacking of something in your life, any kind of gift or virtue, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Um, let me see if I, yeah, I have this. So very important here to ask for the gifts and also ask for the fruits. We have all the list of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Charity, joy, peace, patience, generosity, gentleness, modesty, self-control, chastity. So when you know that you are lacking of any of these fruits, you need to ask. Especially, we struggle a lot with patience, sometimes generosity, uh, self-control. We tend to be very angry or we react with uh, bitterness. So when you know that you have that tendency, and I, I would like you to, to go deeper into your own uh, life and see what you need to ask, you need to go to the Holy Spirit. It's not that you cannot ask Christ, God, uh, the Virgin Mary, no. But he's the main source of what you need to be holy. Okay, that's very important to know, especially in the spiritual warfare. This drawing is interesting. I, I found it on a website. So we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit as the root of this tree, which is us. And then the more we use them and the more we feed from them, the more the fruits are going to be seen in our own life. Okay, does it make sense? So if you work on this uh, uh, gift, fear of God, piety, etc., it will help you grow a strong tree, and the fruits of that tree are going to be the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's how you need to see it. To see it, okay. Um, I'm going to read something for you, just in case. And I got this information from a priest uh, who was giving a talk about the healing power of the Holy Spirit. And that's how I actually begin uh, my, my research four years ago about all of this. My first talk was about the, the healing power of the Holy Spirit. So it says, um, understanding. It illuminates and heals our mind because it enables us to understand ourselves and others on a deeper and more spiritual level. 
to help us mainly to understand more and better the Word of God, but not because of our capacity, but only because of the grace that it's been poured out into our soul. The case of um, counsel. More than a gift to speak to others or, or to give counsel to others, it is a gift to listen to others, especially what God tells me. So counsel is not about a special wisdom that you are going to have to tell others what to do, to give uh, advices. No, it's more about the gift of listening, okay? Especially to the voice of God. It shows me what the Holy Spirit wants to communicate to me in my heart and what He wants me to do. And also the Holy Spirit, through this gift of counsel, is going to tell you what to say to others, okay? It is a gift to let myself be advised by, by God. The Holy Spirit becomes a spiritual GPS, <laughs> which guides me where it is best for me to go, and so on. And it works and enlightens the mind. So in all the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, He's working in our mind, memory, and will. Another example here, piety. It enables us to be merciful, kind, to forgive each other, not to judge, and to understand our neighbor, God, and His will. Therefore, this gift helps me to forgive piety. Imagine that. Not to judge, not to condemn. To see the love of the Father in everything and in everyone. Okay? So I could go on with all the gifts, but because of time, I'm going to continue. But just to give you an example how important that is. So, the rest of the army that we have, the angels, saints, St. Saint Joseph, Virgin Mary, etc. As you can see, and I mentioned this before, also drawing a triangle, these are the choirs of the, angel, the angels. Probably our guardian angels are going to be here, uh, closest to human beings, that's their mission, but we have the rest of the hierarchy. So, uh, we can ask also the intercession of the different angels, but we, we just know a few with their names. But in general, our guardian angel is our main companion in life. Uh, Father Chad Ripperger and many uh, people say, say, this is not a faith, uh, something that we need to believe, that depending on your mission on earth, you receive a number of guardian angels. So a priest has two guardian angels, the one that we all have and one more to walk with me or to protect me. Um, a bishop, uh, I think they have three. That's what they say. The, the Pope has four. And I was making a joke to the ladies the other day that a husband has five <laughs> because he needs a lot of protection <laughs> to fight against many things. They were laughing hard about it. <clears throat> okay, so depending on your mission, you receive a number of, of angels that protect you. Cities also have guardian angels. Uh, countries also have guardian angels and so on. So there is the whole hierarchy of angels also doing their job here on earth. Okay? But what is the most important thing that we need to do? Ask their intercession, protection, direction, guidance, but depending on the situation you are facing. That's why the more we learn about the angels, uh, our Holy Mother, St. Joseph, the saints, the, the more we are going to know whom we can call for help. In the case, I don't know, the, the exorcist, they call the intercession of Padre Pio. He was a, a huge exorcist. Um, some other exorcists have called during a session uh, Jean Paul II or Benedict because they, they were they play a, a big role in, in our life. So, so many of the demons fear them. And also Saint Joseph. Whenever you are tempted, especially with um, the temptation, temptations related to chastity, impurity, and those things of the flesh, you need to ask the intercession of Saint Joseph. You will see the difference. He will help you to overcome any of those and even to help you be a better husband, a better man. So he's the example, the role model that we need in our modern life, especially St. Joseph. We don't have time for it. <laughs> um, our weapons, okay? This is a summary of many things that I have been doing research, but especially our founder, my founder from Pro Iglesia Santa, he gave us what we call the seven basic points, but I added one because of our talk. But this is what our founder uh, uh, gave us. The first one, prayer life. And we have been talking about this. And we talk about this a lot. Daily prayer. 
first of deliverance, healing, protection, renunciation, etc. So you need to see prayers as uh, arrows, okay? And also swords that you can use to defend yourself and also to attack or protect yourself. A spirit of self-denial, now that we are in Lent, fasting, penance, mortifications. If we don't practice this on a daily basis, we are going to become weak. It's like if you don't work, work out, if you don't do push-ups, you're not going to be strong enough. Um, and probably you're going to be defeated if you are, I don't know, uh, an athlete or, or uh, a warrior. Christ in the Eucharist. Holy Mass, many of you go uh, to not only to Sunday Mass, but to daily Mass. Adoration, very important for us. Frequent communion. Devotion to Mary. We know the rosary. Also calling her name. If you are in a situation when you are not able to sleep, you feel the presence, an evil presence in your room or in your house, I mean, things are a little bit strange. And it's going to happen, believe me. I, I, can, I can say this now. <laughs> uh, things are going to get worse in, in a way. Uh, that's why we are having these talks. But you know how to defend your house, okay? So you need to call her name. How do you use her name? You say, in the name, uh, in the name of, of Mary, I ask this spirit of, I don't know, evil to go out of my house. Oh, Mary, please come down into my house. Protect me from this evil presence. So you need to know how to use those words and ask for her intercession. I've asked for her intercession many times when I was having bad dreams and I couldn't sleep. And I even feel the presence of, of evil spirits. Um, and I ask her name, uh, I call her name, and they, you, you see that they go away. Okay, so it's real. Spirit of vigilance. We talk about this too. I remember the examination of conscience. Frequent confession. Please don't wait one year, two years, every month. Be faithful to that. Every month. Or if you know that you have fallen into a mortal sin, don't play with your soul, with your salvation. Okay? Don't wait. You have three priests. So you are spoiled. <laughs> Take advantage of that. You will have confessions every Friday now. So go to confession. Don't be afraid of telling the priest even the worst things that you don't want to say to anybody. Because that's the moment, that's the sacrament, that's the opportunity that you have to really allow the Holy Spirit to, heal, to help you and to heal you. Okay? Frequent confession, spiritual direction. We are working on this. You can ask any of us if you would like to have a spiritual direction. That means that you have a priest or a brother who will help you grow in your spiritual life. Okay? So that sh you should consider this too. Retreats, and um, we are going to have, or we have every year, a silent retreat. So that should be a must for you. That should be a must. Not optional, but a must. It's even better. Uh, how can I put it? It's even better to go to a retreat than to Cancun, to, to Florida, to, to Walt Disney. I mean, that's the opportunity that you have for you to grow in your relationship with God and to allow your wife to have a weekend off too. <laughs> okay, so retreats. Um, September, on September, we are going to have the men's silent retreat. Then it's not knowledge of the faith, but serious knowledge of the faith. That's your responsibility too. You have to put effort on knowing your faith and that's why you're here too. Plan of life, um, we usually talk about this in the silent retreat which helps you organize your life in different levels, your spiritual life, your human development life, um, your marriage life, apostolic life, and human uh, and formation life. Talks about more um, what things that you need to, to know to study. And the use of sacramental. Okay? So I would say those are our main weapons. Then, going deeper into this area, consequences of war. Any war, any kind of war, opens doors, talking about spiritual warfare especially, opens doors to uh, situations or, I don't know, things that you have been facing, okay? It creates wounds, chains, vows, lies, and unclean spirits. I'm going to explain them in a moment. So, these questions are important for us to, to reflect. Father, why, if I go to confession, I receive communion, I pray, I do penance, do I still carry the same defects? 
the same by habits, vices, or sins. I want to change, I do my part, but I see that I am not moving forward. Everything moves slowly or remains the same in my life, my marriage, my family, relationship with my parents, siblings, work, studies, etc. For years I have had health problems that have no cure and that no one knows where they come from or how to treat them. Believe me, many of the things that we have as illnesses could be or are connected with what your soul is going through, the wounds that you carry. I feel that I am repeating the same mistakes, sins, vices, bad habits, etc., for years, and I don't know how to get over them or how to um, defeat them. Okay? Um, let me check here. Okay. So, just a few reasons, a few answers. We have been developing inner wounds related to our feelings, attachments, sexual experiences or traumas. We are usually tempted in the areas where we have sinned. So remember the sins that you have been committing even from, from your childhood. They are very connected with the, uh, with the wounds that you carry in the present. We also develop possessive and repressive attitudes. There is a need to always be in control of everything. Through our wounded souls and actions, we can be creating intergenerational, inter, sorry, intergenerational chains, making others carry with the same lifestyles, mistakes, by habits, vices, etc. So let's say that you had your, your dad who used to drink a lot, okay? You don't know why, but you also have this tendency that could be connected with what your dad uh, created in your, uh, in your memory, okay? So, those create chains. If you don't overcome that problem, could be any kind of other problem, then your kids are going to repeat that again and again and again. So through prayers of uh, deliverance, healing, but especially through your holy life, you can cut that chain, okay? All right. So open doors and padlocks. Everything that comes through our senses creates an impact, influence, or effect on our soul, memory, intellect, and will, and also the body. What we see, hear, eat, watch, touch, listen, listen, not only affects our soul and body, but also our imagination. What comes from the outside can help us grow in virtue and make us stronger spiritually and mentally, or lead us to more temptations, sin, and finally develop good or bad habits. So everything creates within us different experiences, memories, emotions, feelings for good or for, or for bad. Um, what are the medicines that we should consider on this area? Custody of the senses. You have to take care of your senses. That's very important, especially for us as men. Self-control, and that's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Discernment, discipline, self-denial, purity, chastity, etc. So if we keep practicing the we keep practicing this of, on a daily basis, we should be fine, okay? But the more do doors we open to our senses, lack of discipline, lack of self-denial, purity and chastity, the devil is going to have more power over us, and especially weak weaken our, our will. So, inner wounds. <clears throat> and I took all this information from a uh, talk that this priest gave that was in Spanish. He has a few books about healing. Um, the translation is probably a little bit poor, but it's called Name to Heal. So you have to name what you are going through or the spirit that you have to renounce or, I don't know, the problem that you have, so that you can be healed. You, you need to find it first so that you can ask for healing. So the wounds, they start developing when we have not confessed a sin and as a priest, I can tell you many, yeah, many people come and sometimes they say, Father, I have never confessed this sin. It's the first time that I'm going to tell this to anybody. And I always tell the, the person, this is the right place to, to say it. And many of them are afraid and ashamed, uh, but you shouldn't. Because that's, again, that's the moment. That's like going to the hospital. That's, this is the place where you are going to receive what you need. Okay? Um, and confess sins. We also develop inner wounds when we have not forgive ourselves or someone. Especially someone, I would say so. Because we usually deal better with ourselves than with other people. 
So if you know that you have not forgiven someone in your life so far, you need to work on that. Because that could create in you not, not only wounds, but also sickness. That's very connected. Okay? Or yourself. In the case of, I've heard many cases about uh, mothers that they come to confession and they say, Father, I cannot forgive myself because my kids are not practicing their faith right now and I've made so many mistakes. Or you as a father who think, are thinking about something that happened to you or you still carry the, the pain that your kids, that you did something to your kids and you feel that you are paying for, for, it, for it in the present. So you, you have to work on that, on forgiveness. Also, we create wounds when we are not able to ask for forgiveness. Okay? Then, when we don't share the problem or ask for help. And this happens to us a lot as men. We have not shared the problem that we have. We have not asked for help. We keep carrying that burden in our shoulders. And we just wait, wait, and wait until one day, poof, you explode. And that creates problem in your marriage, in your kids, in your work, etc. Okay? So this is a reality. Um, so they grow or affect us more when we experience abandonment, shame, fear, rejection, helplessness, hopelessness, and confusion. And this is called the seven capital wounds. Seven capital wounds. So they are very difficult to overcome, but we carry them a lot. Okay, and from these capital wounds, the rest of the wounds that we have in our present come up or show up. Then they tend to block our memory, intellect, reason, mind, and will. Affect our relationship with ourselves, others, and God. Okay? So think about those wounds that you have. That you can connect with all of this. Um, see. Okay. Also, when we have... Let's say that you are carrying something from your past and you have not been able to forgive, to overcome that problem, you create chains in you. And life becomes heavier and heavier, more difficult to bury. And even if you have not faced the situation, you can also create vows. What does it mean to create vows or to make vows? They are not the same as the vows that I do, poverty, chastity, and obedience. But in the case of women, I, I gave this example. Let's say that you were abused when you were a child. And because of that wound, you have, done, you, you have decided to make this vow of rejecting men. So you always reject men because what you experience. Let me give you another example. Um, okay, this is a good one. Your father was very hard on you okay, when you were a kid. Um, probably he used, I don't know, he was too, too hard on you. Uh, it was hard for you to love him, to get closer to him. So you were growing and then you were not able to overcome that situation that happened to you or that happened to you during the years. And it's hard for you to be, um, to, to love uh, your, your son. Okay? It's hard for you to hug your son. Does it make sense? Because you were wounded from, an, the, the wounds that you have came from another man and it's hard for you to love other men. Especially your son, your father, your brothers. Okay? So those are things that you need to pay attention and, and, and try to go deeper into your own life and see if it's hard for you to, uh, to love someone or if you have ever made a, an inner vow. Another example. <clears throat> a lot of people have or had betrayed you so many times that you have made a vow not to trust anyone. It's hard for you to trust your wife, your parents, your friends, and you keep carrying that. What is your reaction in the present? You become an angry man. Because you cannot trust. Okay? So you make those kind of vows. Lies are more connected with uh, things that you tell yourself that you are, even though you are not. One of the main lies that come a lot uh, in confession is when a, a parent is saying, um, Father, I confess that I am a bad father, the worst father ever, or that I am, that I am a bad um, uh, husband. Probably 
you are, okay, probably. But that's a lie from the devil because I'm sure you don't want to be like that. You don't want to lie to your wife. You don't want to, uh, I don't know, steal. You don't want to do so many things. But you believe those lies and you carry those lies. So through the prayers of uh, deliverance, you can overcome those things. And clean spirits are more connected with the sins that you have committed or that you commit. Because when you open the doors, let's say for lust or for, I don't know, um, lies, the, the spirit who is related to that sin comes and dwells within you, whispering you as much as you uh, allow him. And also when you go to confession, you are able to cut that chain, that power from that evil spirit. Or when it's necessary, you need to make prayers of deliverance too. So I'm going to show you how we do it. Okay, so steps for deliverance. Very important here that you find the root causes of your problems, your wounds, your traumas, bad behaviors, vices, etc. Because from there is when you start the process of healing. Okay, forgiveness, deliverance, etc. So let's use this. Um, you go to confession and you tell the priest, Father, I, I've been very uh, anger and I've been reacting bad to my kids, to my wife, etc. So what you are showing me is the bad apple that is growing. Okay? And try to remember all the sins, all the things that you have confessed or that you confess frequently. They keep growing and they don't grow in the way that God expects. So what I usually do uh, in confession or when I talk to people, okay, anger is the problem. This is what you see, okay? But you need to go deeper. Try to go deeper into the branches, okay? What do you think is causing you to be angry? And many times that I have asked this question, people don't know because they only see the exterior part of their soul. I don't know, Father. Okay, so I ask. Is it your work that is not going well? Is it something in your life, in your marriage? And I try to help them go deeper and deeper and deeper. And let's say that they, they say, okay, Father, I think it's my job. I'm not doing, don't, sorry, I, I am not doing well. I, I am not happy with my job. That's why when I go home, uh, I have this reaction of being, being angry. Okay? That's an example. <clears throat> but most of our sins that we see here in the present, are connected with the seven capital sins. That's why I wanted to have that information here. Could be anger one is one of the capital sins. Anger, we have envy, uh, gluttony, greed, lust, pride, sloth. Usually, many of our sins that are here are connected because those are bigger branches with the seven, seven capital sins, okay? And when you want to find the root cause of, of your problem, of your sins, you need to go even deeper. So, let's say, um, another example, someone harmed you when you were a kid. And that's why you tend to be very angry or bitter, okay? So, you need to go to a root cause and find the moment when everything started. Because I'm sure you were not born like that. That's a, a lie that the devil tells you. Okay? So when you go to the root cause of your problem, you're going to the past. And here is where the devil likes you to live, in the past, not in the present. This is the present, the, the tree that you have to make beautiful. This is the past, where you keep carrying things. So it's always important for us to find the root cause of uh, our problems, okay? And from here, we start the process of healing and forgiveness and deliverance or protection, whatever you need. Um, okay. So these are the main uh, booklets that I researched. Those are in Spanish. They don't have translation, but um, those, those are good. And that book is also very good and bound. I have it here if you want to take a look. And they talk about all of this to find the root causes of our sins, of our problems. I'm going to skip this, talking about forgiveness, but in general, forgiveness is 
a decision that allows you to free others from their guilt and also to free yourself from that guilt. Okay? Um, and God talks, and Jesus talks a lot about forgiveness, how many times we are called to forgive. When we don't forgive, we carry more, uh, um, a bigger weight than when we forgive. Okay? And why don't we forgive? Mainly because of pride, pain, or fear of getting hurt again. Those are the main reasons why do we don't forgive. And how to forgive? Do two words about forgiveness. Um, I don't have space here, but two words here. You need to surrender and you need to renounce. Surrender to the will of God and renounce to your criteria. What does it mean? You have this person that you cannot forgive. God is telling you, you should do it. You must do it. It's important for you. You need to renounce to that criteria that you have your own ways to justify your, yourself and, and say, I'm not going to forgive this person. The next step is you need to surrender. If God is telling you to forgive, surrender to that idea and forgive and move on. If not, you are going to keep carrying that problem again and again. Um, okay, I'm going to finish with these steps and then, yeah, uh, if you can ask me questions, that would be great. So these are the steps to find forgiveness, freedom, healing, the, the deliverance in the name of Jesus. Remember the, the main um, title of the talk, Spiritual Warfare and the Power of the Name of Jesus, okay? So what is the first step that you need to take whenever you want to overcome any of those things that I mentioned. You need to invoke the intercession of the Holy Spirit to help you see deep into your memory and not be afraid. What you're doing is, open this, open this up. Imagine that you are doing this, okay? You are, uh, how do you say, um, digging here, okay? So you are telling the Holy Spirit, please help me see beyond the wounds so that I can find the root causes of my sins, my wounds, etc. That's what you are doing. Because the devil is covering this the whole time. He wants you to live in the past. So you need to go here, all the way to your past, and that's the Holy Spirit helping you do that. Okay? Write down what I need to forgive. Make a list. The more you remember about the, the things that happened to you, it's, it's better for you to make a list, to write it down. Use the name of Jesus to start forgiving. So what you can say, and you can apply this at any time, okay? In the name of Jesus, I forgive myself for, and then you mention what you need to forgive, okay? You should write it down. Situation, action. In the name of Jesus, I forgive, I don't know, my father for this or that. My mom, my wife, I mean, whomever you need to forgive, you need to call the name and the situation. The more specific you are, the better. Again, it's like digging more and more and more, okay? Bless the person who hurt you or offended you, okay? In the name of Jesus, I give you thanks, Lord, for, let's say, my father, and I ask you to bless him so that he can experience your love, forgiveness, etc. Even though that person hurt you, it's important for you to pray for this person and to ask the blessing of God to this person, okay? Then ask forgiveness to the person who hurt you or offended you. In the name of Jesus, I ask forgiveness or uh, uh, yes, forgiveness to my mom for the thing that I did. Okay, that's also important to ask for forgiveness. You can do this with a person in front of you or just in a spiritual way. I've done this myself. Okay, but you imagine that person that hurt you, and you forgive that person in the name of Jesus, but also you ask forgiveness to that person because of the things that you did. Then these steps are very important because we talk about the unclean spirits. Again, our sins are connected with the, uh, with the spirits, okay? Unclean spirits. So you need to identify the unclean spirits or lies that you gave access to your actions, words, deeds, thoughts, and then renounce. What do you say? In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of lust. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of hate, and, and so on, okay? Or the lie that I 
etc., etc. I'm going to show you a list of examples. And those are called deliverance prayers. And then at the end, you have to heal and sin all these wounds so the tree can grow better and give fruits of the Holy Spirit. So you need to seal this and heal this using the precious blood of Jesus. Probably these things are new to, to you or doesn't make much sense, but believe me, it's real and it's powerful. That's why I am trying to give this to you so that you can apply this in your life. And you will see the difference because you are using power and authority. You're not just saying words, okay? So heal and seal the wounds caused by all that I granted access into my soul by invoking the precious blood of Jesus. So you can say, um, precious blood of Jesus, please heal all, all my inner wounds and seal them with your holy blood so that I can experience peace, joy, and, and so on. You need to be creative for that. And at the end, thanksgiving prayers to God, something spontaneous that you can create, the Gloria that we pray during Mass, etc. Here are examples of the spirits that I was mentioning. I'm going to read them for you. So, if you know that you are struggling with something for, for, for weeks, sometimes months, and you feel that it's hard for you to overcome them, you have to do these prayers of renunciation. So you say, in the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of judgment, criticism, uh, suicide, abortion, depression. Many of our youth and many people nowadays deal with depression, with uh, anxiety. So whenever you know that that's becoming a problem for you, it's not that you don't have to go to, to the doctor, okay? Go to the doctor for sure. But could be also related to this because of the doors that you open, okay? In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of fear, um, witchcraft, if you did some of those things. Uh, what else? Uh, addictions, okay? Uh, lust, masturbation, fornication, adultery, um, spirit of homosexuality or lesbianism. I mean, so many things that, that you can renounce depending on what you have went through. The other are the lies. Uh, yes. Okay. You have, in the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie that I am not significant, the lie that I am a terrible father, that, that I am ugly. Well, I don't know about that, probably. <laughs> I mean, but the devil could be lying to you, okay? <laughs> Um, I couldn't make that joke with the, with the ladies because I could feel offended. <laughs> so in the name of Jesus, I renounce uh, the lie that my life is cursed, that I am a victim. Uh, I cannot do anything right. And I'm sure you have experienced that, that you have failed so many times that you think that you are not a good person. Okay? So you need to renounce to those lies. Um, that what I want doesn't matter, etc., etc. And that list is from that book, Unbound. That's a ministry of, of deliverance. Then what else? The lie uh, that God made a mistake when he made me. Uh, the lie that I am a burden, and so on. And I'm going to share that with you, okay? So uh, these are, I would say, the main uh, booklets that you should have, okay? You have already that one, the Spiritual Warfare Prayers. But then you should read the book, Catholic Warrior is connected with that booklet, and the Deliverance Prayers for the Laity. It has amazing prayers that you could use at any time. And one of them is, talks about protection, deliverance. I mean, this is a good book that you should read. Okay? So I'm open to, to questions right now, uh, because this, this is what we have been mentioning. Yes, I am.
Yes, so if it's hard for you to do it by yourself, then ask the help of a priest, and the priest can pray over you. Um, but I, I think you should follow those steps. The first one is to invoke the Holy Spirit. It's all about faith, okay? It's not just steps uh, that you follow, like a manual of how you build uh, something, but it takes faith. That whenever you ask the Holy Spirit, you need to even imagine that he's opening your paths and your wounds. And little by little, the more you do it, the more you practice, because it's also about practice, the more you're going to see uh, deep into your past. Many times it happens that the person has buried something that happened in his or her past that he doesn't even remember at all. And when we, or when you do these prayers of, of deliverance, the person starts remembering, yeah, especially traumas. Um, that happens a lot. Even, I remember now about abortion, or a mother, I remember this in Sacramento, um, this mother, this mom had so many problems with, his, with her uh, daughter, okay, in the present here. They had a very bad relationship. And I remember reading um, that even when a mother is pregnant, um, it has happened many times that the mother wanted a boy of a girl. This is funny, but it's real. And when she knew that she had a daughter, she didn't want her from the womb. Just the feeling, the thought. And that passed on the baby girl. And of course, everything was fine. But then this mother didn't want to, uh, how do you say, feed her? No, to breast her? How do you, how do you say? N nurse, nurse her? Yeah, she didn't want that. And she rejected her daughter. And from those months of, of this baby growing and then years, of course, this girl uh, started developing rejection towards women. And then she became a lesbian. So as you can see, many things are connected right here when, when a mother is pregnant. Uh, could be the opposite too. So what do you, what do, you do? You need to go deeper in, in, into that moment and I helped this mother remember when she was pregnant, and I asked her that question, and she told me, why are you asking me this question? I said, how was uh, the moment when you knew that you had a girl? And she remembered, I didn't want her. And that makes sense now. So when, when you go deeper into all this, then there's so, uh, a sort of light that comes into the present, and you start uh, realizing, okay, I think this is a problem. And we start from there. Any other questions? It's a lot, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the other one I get asked a lot from people is, and you kind of mentioned it with the Holy Spirit about wanting to do more, like not feeling you're doing enough. Mm -hmm. um, people ask a lot like, what are the things you need to be doing? What are the basics? What are the first steps in your spiritual life or even just spiritual warfare in general? Yeah, the basics. Right. How do you start? Frequent prayer, 15 minutes every day. That's why the, the four uh, session is going is more about that. Uh, daily prayer. Um, if you can go to, to Mass during the week, even better, because the more you receive the Eucharist with uh, a soil that is... Um, healed and, and, and open to the Holy Spirit, the more you grow in virtue. Um, yeah, it's more about your spiritual life, prayer, meditation of the scripture, because that's the place where God speaks to you, and then he will lead you where to go. And also we talk about spiritual direction, someone to guide you, to help you. At least, I don't know, one time, have a meeting with any of us, we can guide you a little bit. I mean, that's at least something. It's like going to a doctor. Don't just go to a doctor or what? In this case, we go to the doctor when we are sick, <laughs> but it will be better to go when we feel a little bit sick and then it will give us a better medicine. I don't know, but it's preventing. It's all preventing. Yeah. Um, that should be a, a good start. Community, for sure. This group, this, this is great because it's, it's going to help you go um, together, not by yourself.
I will start with that. You know, simple spiritual life, um, what the church is teaching us. The, the, the eight things that I mentioned, uh, I, I would start with that. Yeah. Any other question or comment? Yes. Um, I have been sending out the videos, but um, going to share your slides. I will, yes. Um, I'm going to just make some changes, um, pick some words, and Vince is going to what is Vince? He's going to help me with the English. I know there are so many mistakes, but yes, I will share that for sure. Yeah. Anything else? No. Okay. Should we close with a prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord Jesus, please come and heal my wounded and troubled heart. I beg you to heal the torments that are causing anxiety in my life. I beg you in a particular way to heal the underlying source of my sinfulness. I beg you to come into my life and heal the psychological harms that struck me in my childhood and from the injuries they have caused throughout my life. Lord Jesus, you know my burdens. I lay them on your good shepherd's heart. I beseech you by the merits of the great open wound in your heart to heal the small wounds that are in mine. Heal my memories so that nothing that has happened to me will cause me to remain in pain and anguish filled with anxiety. Heal, O Lord, all those wounds that have been the cause of evil that is rooted in my life. I want to forgive all those who have offended me. Look to those inner sores that make me unable to forgive. You who came to forgive the afflicted of heart, please heal my wounded and troubled heart. Heal, O Lord Jesus, all those intimate wounds that are the root cause of my psychological psychological illness. I offer you my heart. Accept it, Lord, purify it, and give me the sentiments of your divine heart. Heal me, O Lord, from the pain caused by the death of my loved ones. Grant me to regain peace and joy in the knowledge that you are the resurrection and the life. Make me an authentic witness to your resurrection, your victory over sin and death, and your loving presence among all men. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.